Aloha students. Uh, this is my lecture on how to do kinematic equations, okay? Uh, we talked about it in class, but hopefully this will be a nice refresher for some of you. Kinematic equations are the equations that allow us to solve motion and describe it mathematically. And it's really just three simple equations. One of them you already know, and that's the first one here, the VF equals VI plus AT. If you look at it, you can see it's derived from this, this equation right here, the acceleration formula, which is VF minus VI over T. I simply multiplied both sides by T, there's the AT, okay? And then I um, added the VI to that side as well. So the AT and the VI is equal to VF. So pretty easy to see where that one came from. I like this one better because it's a straight line and students have less trouble when there's, there's not something down here to solve for. Uh, the second equation is completely new. Uh, and that says that the final position of an object is equal to its initial position. And typically XI is zero. 99% of the time it'll be zero. Um, it's, it's unusual to say, hey, starting at five meters, how far did I go? You know, why not just start at zero? Um, the second part here is uh, the VIT. Uh, that's your initial velocity times time. That's times now, VI times T. And the last part is one half acceleration times time squared. All right, and the last formula is your final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus twice the acceleration times your delta x, or how far you went. Since this is typically zero, xf is usually just how far you went. So three really basic equations that we're gonna use to solve problems probably for the next few chapters here. So you get kind of familiar with these equations. Um, they're algebra, basically I'll always give you three things and you just gotta solve for the fourth, uh, picking the correct equations. Now, one problem that students always tell me is, I don't know what is what. And there's only so many choices here. And so they're, they're a little hard to mess up. So let's take a look at the choices you have. Um, we know that V is a velocity. VF is your final velocity. That's what the F is for. VI is your initial velocity. Uh, XF is your final position. XI is starting. And again, that's typically zero. A is acceleration and T is time. Now, when you look at a problem, how do you know which one is, is what of these here? Well, velocity is always gonna be in meters per second. Okay, it's a speed. It's not gonna be in seconds. It's not gonna be in meters per second squared. And it's not gonna be in meters, okay? It's kind of obvious that it's gonna be the meters per second one. Your final position, and it's gonna be in meters. Like how far did I go in meters? Or, hey, if it took me seven meters to stop, how fast was I going? That seven meters to stop then is your final position, how far you went. Acceleration is usually there's a clue in front of it. It'll say, hey, I accelerated at this rate. Or you'll see meters per second squared, which is the unit that acceleration comes in. Time, I mean, how do you mess up time? If it says it took me three seconds to do something, that's your time. It's not a velocity or a position. So even though, you know, you look at the question and you go, oh, it seems like there's a lot of things. There's really not, there's only six, and they're usually pretty intuitive as to what is what. All right, there are keys to solving kinematic problems, and I gave you three basic steps. So I started with a basic problem like this, Mr. Hagi learning to skateboard started from rest in Kalmana and flew down Wainui Nui at acceleration of 2.72 meters per second squared for 45 seconds. What was his final velocity or his final speed in meters per second? Well, um, these problems sound like algebra word problems, but they're actually not. They're plug and chugs. They're fairly easy to solve. Uh, you just need to identify what is what in the question and then which one of the equations to use. So let's go through the steps. Step one is make a list of what you know. So let's slide this up here. We need to read the question carefully and make a list. Now there's always gonna be three things in your list. And I see two numbers there. This one here says you had an acceleration of 2.72 meters per second squared. So we know that A is 2.72 meters per second squared. I mean, there's two clues, acceleration and meters per second squared. That tells you it's acceleration. The second thing is, hey, I did it for 45 seconds. I mean, what else can that be but time? So we know that time is 45 seconds. Now you're looking at this and going, well, where's the third one? And that's where you have to read these carefully. Typically, the velocity that you start with or end with is zero. So let's read this question carefully here. All right, Mr. Huggy started from rest. Ah, well, if you're starting from rest, then your starting velocity is zero. And that's where that one is hidden. And I always like to put what I'm looking for as well, just in case I made a mistake and made this one of them. What is his final velocity? So I'm looking for VF, okay? so. There's your, um, there's your things that you know and what you're looking for. And you should make that list, make a habit of it. it. It makes the problem a lot easier to solve. That is step one, okay? 
Step two is look at the three equations and pick which one you're gonna use. And only one can work. And again, I hear students go, I don't know what equation to use. Use the one that works. Kind of obvious. Let's look at the first one. What do I mean by that? Let's look at this first one. Oh, I've got VF here. I'm looking for it. V, I, A, and T. You know what? We lucked out on the first one. This is the one I'm going to use. It's got what I'm looking for, and it has the three things I'm given. This is a no-brainer. This is going to be the one I'm going to use. I'm going to plug my uh, stuff into that. Oops, I almost made a tab page. This is the one I want to use. Let's look at the other two equations and see why I'm not going to use them, just in case you looked at them first. The second equation is this. Um, and I can already tell why I'm not going to use it. It has uh, something that I don't know. In fact, where is VF in this equation? Sometimes I see students use the wrong equation and tell me things I wasn't even asking for. Uh, I could use this equation to solve for time. Oh, no, I already have time. Oh, how far he went, the final position, okay? But I'm not asking for that. And it doesn't have a VF in it, so why would you use it? Uh, if you're looking for VF, and you want an equation that has VF in it. So this one is a, it's a no-brainer. Don't use it. The last equation is uh, VF squared equals VI squared plus 2A delta X. All right, it definitely has the VF. It has the VI, but unfortunately, it also has, again, how far I went. So I've got two unknowns in this, so there's no way I can use this to solve for anything. So once again, if you pick the wrong equation, you're probably going to have a hard time. So if you're having a hard time, you probably pick the wrong equation. So we've determined what it is. Only one equation will work for these. So let's get rid of these two. I ask you for step three. So step one, make a list. Step two, find the right equation. Step three, write that equation down and plug in the numbers right underneath it, okay? That's really important. We know we're looking for VF. We know VI is zero. We know A is 45. And we know T is 2.72. Now at this point, who can I solve this? You're looking at that and going, really, all I gotta do is multiply 45 times 2.72. And uh, the answer to that question is, yeah, that's all you're gonna do. So on your trusty rusty calculator, you go 45 times 2.72. And you get 122.4 is my final velocity. And that is going to be in meters per second, which is what velocity is in. And that's as simple as uh, kinematic equations are. It's a matter of uh, reading the question, making a list of the three things you know. Now watch out, there's usually one hidden in there. It'll say, hey, I came to rest. Oh, so your VF is zero. Or, hey, I started from rest. Oh, your VI is zero. It will never tell you, oh, my VI is zero or my VF is zero. So you have to get that from reading the question. Uh, make your list, find the equation you want to use, write it down, plug in the numbers right underneath it, chug away after you've plugged away, and get your answer. And really that's as simple as kinematic equations are. So good luck with doing your homework on these guys, and I'll do the next video on falling objects, which is a little more difficult. All right, good luck.